Welcome everybody to Bugbears and Brews. My name is Brian and today we're doing encounter recap number four of the Tomb of Annihilation campaign. Uh, so we'll start off with you guys heading into the Temple of Crocodile and Man. Um, did some short scouting with Don Spider. I, I forget the name of Don's character right now. Uh, Naivara Spider. Uh, did some quick scouting with that and it's essentially just a uh, a long hallway with a couple tiers of levels leading up with the door at the end there. Um, stepping into it, it didn't take you long to find the first trap, which was a pitfall trap. Luckily, you guys were able to get out of that without issue. Um, nobody harmed in that. Took a look down, and there was a couple dead goblins down at the bottom, uh, looking relatively freshly dead. Uh, so from there, you guys stepped out of the... Uh, the temple and tried to figure out, you know, what's the best way to go about this. And uh, when you went back in, the uh, the pit trap reset. So trying to figure out how to go about this without triggering the pit trap or not falling in your guys themselves. Uh, Sai decided to take a goblin and put it at the end of a 10-foot pole and kind of use it like a goblin mop against the floor. So there's all this blood smearing around. Uh, but he's like trying to find the, the pressure plate, and he does find the pressure plate. Uh, sadly, he held on to the goblin as the pit trap fell open. He goes up in the air, starts flying, and uh, is about to go down with the uh, the ten foot pole and the goblin, and wound up actually letting go at the very end, and did an amazing acrobatics check uh, to the other side, and so he made it without issue. Uh, turned a horrible fail into a remarkable feat. Uh, from there, you guys were able to kind of scoot, you know, scoot around the outside of the pit trap. There was probably a small shimmy ledge that you guys could go against. Um, and so Psy, Fitz, and who was it? Psy, Fitz, and Leorin, I think, went across. Um, and when they did, you know, they started walking again and... Didn't really pay much attention, wound up stepping on more pressure plates, and instead of finding a pit trap, they found a blade trap, and uh, it did quite a bit of damage. Sai and Fitz both went down. The Orin was up. Uh, he, or no, it wasn't the Orin at the time, I think it was Carr. Yeah, it was Carr, sorry. Uh, the Orin then crossed to go ahead and try to, uh, you know, help uh, save the people that were on the other side that was down. Carr went and started stabilizing Sai. Um, and then the Orin came across and tried to, uh, he stabilized Fitz and then was trying to get Fitz back to the other side and wound up while trying to traverse the ledge, fell down and was going to do a lot of bad stuff to both him and the Fitz, but, uh, luckily the gods aligned with everything and the Orin's, uh, wings, because he's uh, now known to you guys as Osmar, popped out for just a quick second. Um, they weren't fully fleshed out wings. They were a little sickly looking, uh, but it slowed him down just enough so he hit the ground without taking any damage. So from there, you guys went and uh, pulled everybody back out, got everybody to the outside of the, uh, of the temple and said, you know what, let's take a step back. We're gonna go ahead and take a rest get up to date, you know, get everybody healed back up and head back in then. So took a long rest and went back in. The pit trap was kind of a non-issue now. Uh, now knowing that there's this blade trap, you guys took a look around and found all sorts of pressure plates. So you couldn't disarm any one pressure plate, uh, but you could jam the holes and you guys tried to decide to jam the holes with, um, with torches. And that seemed to work out okay. Um, and came up to going uh, up the ledge. It was another, this one was a pretty obviously a trap, a very distinct looking tiled floor. And uh, up top there was a doorway with uh, lit patterns and all that. And you guys were able to deduce the issue or deduce the correct pattern for crossing the floor, even though some things were a bit askew and all that uh, pretty easily. Or sorry, not pretty easily, but uh, after some discussion. But like, you didn't have to do trial and error. It's like you guys talked it out. Uh, you guys used the clues really well. Um, thought it out pretty thoroughly and made it across without 
any issues with that one. So you know, he made it cross just fine. I really like the way that one played out. There's a lot of good discussion taking place back and forth there. Um, you know, using good knowledge, and I think I dropped enough hints that it made it so it wasn't horrible to figure out. Uh, up top, the doorway, uh, you guys were able to figure out that puzzle as well, which boiled down to you guys having to stack up on top of each other, uh, you know, like the crocodile and the man. So somebody was playing the role of the crocodile riding on the man's back, then press the buttons in certain orders. Uh, once again, uh, there's a little bit of discussion that took place there, but you guys were able to figure it out without issue. Um, once you thought through it. So, really like the way that was played out. Uh, the final room, big spiral pillar uh, with stairs going up it, and then up top was a vase being held up by some apparatus. And you guys are debating how to go about this. Once again, thanks to the clues that were laid out there, you decided to do the crocodile and man routine once again, piggyback across uh, and go up the stairs, and that worked. Um, getting up to the vase, you guys thought the vase was trapped. That, that was a lot of fun, uh, although it could have been trapped. But instead of worrying about the trap or anything like that, you guys decided, you know what, let's go ahead and grab it crocodile man style. So one, the person on the bottom who was being the man grabbed the uh, apparatus that was holding the vase. The other person grabbed the vase, um, and that worked. So... And I think that one was trapped as well. I don't have the book in front of me, but I'm pretty sure that one was trapped as well. Uh, trying to get off the whole Crocodile Man theme, Carr decided to head back down the steps by himself and wound up setting off a trap uh, that they didn't set on the way up there. So that kind of re you know concreted the fact that you had to be piggyback style on uh, through this uh, temple there. Uh, knowing that you guys didn't, everybody climbed up on each other's backs and walked out just fine. No, I lied. Not everybody walked out just fine because a couple more people uh, tripped on the the blade trap. And because it wasn't properly di uh, disarmed, um, people that were shoving torches into these holes and whatnot, they weren't doing a very good job. They were just kind of putting them in lightly. So uh, a couple people took a little bit more damage. But eventually, everybody made it out. Okay, nobody else went down. Um, from there, it was a discussion on where to go. Because you guys, uh, you had this loot now. Uh, Nivar was able to do some identification on them. The jar is an alchemist jar. And then the uh, device is an immovable rod. Uh, but like I said, you had to discuss where you wanted to go. Um, the issue was, is you guys are coming up on the Order of the Gauntlet outpost, uh, Camp Vengeance, and you know, you heard rumors that they have the right to constrict people right now because of the uh, undead stuff that's going on. So you decided, let's ditch the boats, cut through the jungle, get to the Eldani Basin, and go around that way versus trying to even come close to Camp Vengeance. So you actually made it, came up a pretty good idea and created your own vault. Uh, you took everything you wanted from the camp, including your boats and the goblin boats, and doing the now crocodile and man combination all the way through. You guys will be able to get back through and use the center main chamber thing as a vault for you guys. Uh, from there, you headed through the jungle into the Aldani Basin, uh, or towards the Aldani Basin, uh, and came to a ravine. And looking down the ravine, you caught, saw several dead bodies and then um, no real clear way to cross. So River and Flask let you guys know you could probably go around and lose maybe a day, maybe a little bit more than that, who knows for sure. Uh, or you can go down and cut across, take a couple hours, but you'd get through it. Uh, so you decided let's just go through it, not worry about uh, going and doing, uh, you know, possibly getting lost or getting taken more than a day or anything like that. So heading down in the ravine, uh, climbing down, Barlow slipped, uh, slid all the way down, landed on top of one of those bodies, and sadly the body wasn't really fully dead yet. It was a zombie, and so combat broke out. Combat, this was pretty pretty harmless combat for the most part. A couple people took some blows. Uh, poor Barlow in the beginning took quite a bit because he 
he uh, slipped down the ridge and then he took a, a grapple at the beginning and then I think he took one more. But once everybody got down, the zombies were relatively harmless. Um, the main thing though is after you killed them, looking them over, most of the other zombies looked pretty newer. And then there was two that were far, far more decayed looking. And those ones actually had a uh, blue triangle tattooed on their forehead. Barlow was able to tell you that that's actually the sign of uh, Rosnes, Rosnesi. I, I still haven't figured out how the hell to say it. Um, who was once a very good guy in the area of Chaltz, but then he uh, something went wrong and he created a massive undead army. Um, he hasn't been seen from some time, but the remnants of his army have now kind of starting to spill out. So some people believe something happened to him that he's no longer around and now these zombies are in, undead are kind of out of control. Uh, you also did find a writ that seems to be a little bit too damp right now uh, to take a look at. So this was a writ of expedition. So um, Navar took that and he was going to try to take a look and see what he can figure out with that. Um, that's where we left off. So you guys were heading up the other side of the ravine. I'll say we made it up top there and then you guys are heading into the Aldani Basin. Um, I really like the way that this, uh, the intro starter temple, whatever you want to call it, worked out. Uh, kind of gave you guys a little bit of the, a glimpse of what you're looking into. You know, people already know that this is a hex crawl and, uh, dungeon trap type game later on. Um. I'm glad the clues I laced in there because without, like, just going with the book, what they had in there, some of the puzzles might have been a little bit more uh, tricky to figure out there. Eventually, you guys got to the idea of just putting you put, you know each other on the shoulders, and that worked just fine. Um, the ravine combat, that felt a little rushed, but we're a little short on time on that, and then, you know, I wanted to try to squeeze that in. Um, but it was zombies, too, so it's like you're not going to get a whole lot of... Uh, harm there with the zombies. The thing with the zombies though is like two, three, I think three of them died to critical hits. So like I didn't even get to do the the cool, you kill a zombie, but you roll the damage to see, you know, roll the check to see if you even make it to see if it's truly dead. And so like three, you know, three of them automatically were just dead because you hit them with a crit at the end. Meta-wise, it does, you know, takes them out. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun with this. Um, really, really liked that starter dungeon. Um, hopefully the other dungeons play out as well, or other trap areas, whatever you want to call them, play out as well. So talk to you later on, uh, talk to you later on Wednesday, guys. Bye.